Would you be tempted to linger longer and spend more if a high-end designer store offered you all the amenities of a luxury hotel? Well, the competitive luxury market is betting on it with a whole slew of new sumptuous VIP lounges and salons. And as WSJ's fashion columnist Christina Binkley is here to tell us. Christina, thanks so much for joining us. Hi, Tanya. So we're talking about more than just a glass of champagne, right? Yes, we certainly are. I really had a hard time pulling myself out of some of these suites. I can only compare them to luxury suites in some of the best hotels. The furnishings are, are deep and plush. There's lots of them. Many of them have terraces where you can go out and sit in the sun. Wow. Now, is this mostly a Beverly Hills phenomenon or is it spreading? You know, it, it's really starting in Beverly Hills, and I thought it was going to be just composed there until I started hearing whispers of salons like this being built in, for instance, Beijing. Prada has one in Las Vegas. So they're, they're, it's, it's beginning. I'd say that's the tip of the iceberg. But Rodeo Drive happens to have a confluence of, of tourists who come to, to Beverly Hills and three-story real estate overlooking the drive where people can do take their penthouses and turn them into these things. So it's, it's, it's like a perfect storm. And so do they then also use these spaces to throw parties as well? Are they multi-purpose? They absolutely do. I've been in, that's actually how I first found out about these, was being invited to cocktail parties at them. It's exactly what they do. Gorgeous. Now, who gets to partake? I mean, how much do you have to spend before you get whisked behind the velvet ropes? Or who do you have to be, right? Yes. You know, this is, this is, they want to keep these things working. The folks at Louis Vuitton told me that theirs is used every single day, sometimes more than once a day, and that they wouldn't turn away somebody who was there for the first time. They want to use this place and put it to work and have it impress. Now, does this mean that shopping at this luxury level is becoming more and more of an experience, not just that an event where you go in and try a few things on and leave? That is exactly what's going on now. This is this is the height of competition. There are a lot of very wealthy people out there, but there are more brands trying to cater to them than than can possibly all all you know sell all their products. So they're ratcheting up luxury at every single level, including the service level. And this must be happening because that ultra wealthy one percent is spending their money. Is that right? at unprecedented levels. We may think that there's the, the vestiges of, of recovery going on, but if you're in the upper 1% of, of wealth, you are spending like you never have before. It must be nice, because I have to say, if I am spending that kind of money on retail, I'd be expecting some perks too. I mean, designer clothes are so expensive these days. Yes, that is, that is true. I mean, and did you speak with some of, the, some of these clients or some of these customers? Is this to everyone's taste or is it a little too much for some people? You know, I was uh, actually surprised and, and hadn't thought about it from this perspective, but if you're going to go into one of these suites, that is a commitment of time. If you're a shopper that wants in and out quickly, that's probably not the choice for you. And as a matter of fact, I spoke with one very good customer of, of Vuitton and, and Burberry in particular who said that she's seen the suites, she's been in there, and it's not for her. She wants to get in and out quickly. I respect that. All right. Thank you so much, Christina, for that.